Hi, I'm Phil. Happy Christmas and welcome to Holy Habitus. Today we're looking at the seventh beatitude. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Now, I've deliberately kept sons in there um, because I think rather than children, sons of God keeps that resonance of the son of God, like Jesus, who was a peacemaker. So right at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, Jesus says, you know, to be like me, to be like the father as well, you need to be peacemakers. Peacemaking, peacemakers is a composite word in our English, but also in the Greek, peacemakers. It could be peace doers, peace workers, peace performers, those who seek to bring God's shalom peace to bear in the world. And we've talked about how the Beatitudes are blessings for the breathless. And once we've received that peace in our own hearts, we then have to breathe it out and be peacemakers in the world. Now, what does peacemaking look like? Because sometimes we think in order to keep the peace, we use that phrase, don't we? When conflict arises, actually, we sort of panic and we quick sweep it under the carpet. You know, it's about dampening it down, pretending it didn't exist and just carrying on as if nothing has happened. But actually, peacemaking is a much more feisty and dynamic quality or work than that. Sometimes it means naming a conflict and saying, we're not quite in the right place here. Uh, what's going on here? It's about, rather than sweeping things out under the carpet, it's about tackling them and shining a light. And sometimes that's difficult because it can bring more conflict because people don't like having to face things. Um, and Jesus said, didn't he, I didn't just come to bring peace on earth, I came to bring division actually, because when you shine the light of truth, sometimes that causes more division because people take sides. Um, and uh, it's much more kind of convenient just to sweep under the carpet so we can all get along you know at a superficial level but actually to have real peace to have that shalom peace which goes deeper that deeper relationship then we need to rather than kind of jettison conflict and pretend it doesn't exist actually when it comes up use it as a com uh, as a context for our deeper truth and a deeper love and a deeper graciousness with one another an opportunity for that deep shalom peace um, so sometimes it means wading into a conflict rather than running away from it and that involves courageous conversations saying, hang on, we're not quite, our relationship isn't quite right at the moment, is it? What's, what's gone on? Or you hurt me when this happened, or I've wronged you, I know, and I need to say sorry about that. Or whatever it is, we need to be agents of reconciliation. That's quite a costly process it was for Christ. The ministry of reconciliation took him to the cross. Um, and it should do the same for us as well. It's a costly ministry, which is why we don't like doing it. But the question this week is, is there anyone that you need to have a courageous conversation with? You need to broach the topic of a conflict, maybe historic or just come up at the moment. How can you be a peacemaker, a peace worker in that situation?